welcome to my YouTube channel, 90% Native. My name is Michelle and I live in Northern Virginia in Zone 7A. Today I am going to take you on a tour, on the March tour of my woodland garden so we can see all the um, plants that are starting to emerge and are going to bless us with their blooms in just a few weeks to a month here. Okay, so here we are walking up to the woodland garden which comes and starts, begins um, right off of my deck. Down here I have some virgin's bower or virginia clematis cuttings that i did this weekend i cut back my virginia clematis or virgin's bower and i'm trying to root those and then next to it here i have um a persimmon tree i ordered a persimmon tree and i'll link below to where i ordered it from and there were, th I ordered three of them and it looked like there was a side shoot. So I'm gonna see if that one's gonna take root. So anyway, coming off the deck here, um, the Canada, no, no, not the Canada. They're the anemones. I think they're the European anemones are just starting. Here in a couple weeks, this whole area will be covered with those anemones and the beautiful white blooms. Now, I don't think they're native. I don't think they're the Can uh, sorry the Canada anemone. I wish they were. Um, maybe I'll try and ID them again. But anyway, they're still beautiful. And then I have um, Christmas fern in here as well. Next to that patch, you can see the golden Alexanders are starting to come up, and some of them are actually starting to bloom. And they will put on a beautiful long show. And then behind that, I have a Hypericum, let's see, right there, a Hypericum prolificum or shrubby St. John's wort. Behind me, right in front of the deck, I have where my Joe Pie weed usually comes up, and I've left those canes there in case there are any insects um, hibernating in there. In front of it, I have lots of common violets, common blue violets. There are there's wild blue indigo in here. There is <clears throat> bottle gentian. I haven't cut these back yet. I'm trying to wait until the first, but you can see the beautiful greenery um, that'll be there for me when I go ahead and cut these back. I'm also going to try and put some scented herbs here, things that aren't necessarily invasive so I can keep the deer out this year. And then this bed is lined with Carex flaccosperma there that will need a I cut back to just look a little bit tidier and then also this bed is lined with my favorite Hypericum prolificum which is an excellent plant for the bumblebees. The bumblebees just absolutely love the yellow blooms of the Hypericum prolificums. And then this year I am going to put right here along the, um, the deck I'm gonna put a bunch of hyacinth bean vines. Um, I think it'll look really pretty and kind of just, you know, take away from some of this empty area, which I don't like. Um, but anyway, I also have Virginia clematis. That's right here is the Virginia clematis that is emerging. And this is the plant that I took all those cuttings from. So Virginia clematis can be pretty, pretty aggressive. Uh, so I cut those ones back to the ground Over here. There's not much to see in the native hedgerow just yet So I'll wait for you know a tour of the side woodland garden later, but over here you can see My bluebells are emerging right there and then here are some right there Getting ready to get started and I have some golden alexanders behind it so just a quick stop here so you can see that and it looks like some of my golden alexanders i either planted those over there let's see i don't know if you can see back there let's see if i can zoom in let's see i don't know if you can really see it or not but it looks like i'm getting some golden alexanders back there as well wait for the plane okay coming around here I have another 
tripod sort of arrangement here for the Virginia clematis, which is um, emerging. Let me get out of the way. Which is emerging right there. And I also put, oh, there's another one that's emerging right here. And then another, and then I put some um, coral honeysuckle cuttings here as well, just to intermix with the Virginia clematis. I thought that might be pretty. And back over to the golden ragwort patch next to, in front of that actually, we have phlox here, a beautiful white phlox. I think it's diverticus. I may be mistaken. And then a bunch of um, sensitive fern. Okay, there's a non-native azalea back there. I'll cut that back pretty hard after it blooms. If it does bloom, the deer eat on it. And then we have daffodils and pretty much like daffodils emerging, bottle brush grass emerging. Down here you can see the green and gold starting to get going. These will grow and grow above the, the leaves. Then further down this side, we have two different, um, actually they might not be different, but two uh, non-native azaleas. I'll give those a hard cut after they bloom. But this area for right now will just be daffodils and little things emerging. I do have some trillium up front, which I haven't seen yet. And then we have lots of native spiderwort in there and different sedges. Now, if I turn to my right, you can see some daffodils are blooming. And I also have hellebore blooming here. Let me get out of the way. Oh, the sun is really hard to shoot in. There's the hellebore. And then, you know, all sorts of things I have in here, but things that are starting to come out are the non-native astilbes. So I will cut these stalks back maybe April the 1st. I'm trying to just give the wildlife more time um, in the, the messiness. Oh, I'm gonna come back up the path and these are spider warts that I grew from seed a couple years ago. There. And then further back, I have some bleeding hearts. They're not the native version. They're cultivars. I'm hoping to get more natives this year. I tried to find them last year. It was so hard. But anyway, and then here's some Jacob's Ladder starting to come up. We have um, white wood aster starting to come up as well in this patch. There's a lot of it over there. Yeah, so that's what's coming up here. So I'll go back down the path. And I have more hellebore here. They bloomed really late this year. I'm not sure what happened. Um, maybe it's because we had a warmer fall or something, but I've had years where my hellebore were blooming, you know, right around Christmas. I mean, they do call it the Christmas rose. Uh, back there, I have some bottle brush grass starting to green up. On the other side of the path, this is where I have all of the um, Allegheny Spurge or the, the native Pachysandra right there. And that's intermixed with green and gold that's starting to emerge. Okay, coming down the path, this is all looking still barren, but if you watched my garden tour videos, you know last year in this whole area, I planted Allegheny Spurge cuttings so that this area could be a lot greener during the off season. But so there should be Allegheny Spurge in here. There's gonna be Jack in the pulpits, ferns, sedges, all that kind of good native stuff on the other side of the path. Again, we have more hellebore. A hellebore patch. Behind the hellebore patch back here is a patch of golden ragwort. 
And then another patch of golden ragwort here. Hypericum prolificum starting to green up for me. And then in this patch we have lots of common blue violets and uh, lady ferns and it's lined with Carex flaccosperma. So just um, a lot of the same. And then I'll take you to the right side of the path and we have, here we have native sedges. This is Carex sprengali, which is native a little further north of here. And then I have bluebells in here starting to emerge. And then there's more of the Allegheny Spurge, the native Pachysandra. So things are starting to sprout in this bed. This bed is brand new from last year. And then over here we have a couple fringe trees. And they are caged and let's see if we have any buds on them. And then there's another one over here. And then we have a service berry and a spice bush here. This right here is the stalk of a devil's walking stick. And for perspective, here is a big devil's walking stick and it ends like where is it right it's all the way up to there and i have white wood aster here getting starting to come up okay so on this side this is american hookah Rus and carex flaccosperma and lady ferns you can see that the violets are starting to get going and they will have such beautiful flowers here soon. Okay, and then back to the right, this whole area is like a fern patch. And I told you I bought some persimmons. I'm gonna put one persimmon right in the middle there. I'm gonna try and do that today. And then what I did is I just started some to line this area with uh, Carex amphibola and I have um, what is it golden alexanders and green and golds and stuff in there as well now then look here's the dry creek bed right here so there should be some Virginia water leaf there starting to come up I see some right now and then this is full of a lot of sedges now we get a lot of water coming down from the house I put it in the dry creek bed. That's been working great, but also just with the native grasses and sedges, they help a lot with uh, drainage. So we have a lot of those in there, and then intermixed is Tiarella and what else? Well, common blue violets because they're everywhere. Okay, and then on the other side of this path, which is lined with uh, Carex flaccosperma. This is my bird garden, which is fenced for the deer. And if you see there, they figured out how to get into my door. I don't even know how they did that. So anyway, I had to secure it. But I don't know if we can see it real well, but the elderberries are starting to green up. There you go. The elderberries are starting to green up. We have daffodils everywhere which aren't native and this all this greenery let me try it I can't get it let's see all this greenery here that is golden ragwort and that I just will hope spreads over the floor of this entire bird garden okay and then right next to the bird garden at the top there's a hellebore patch I'll take you over there and then you can see here I have bluebells emerging I do really just want like the whole yard in the early spring to have like just bluebells everywhere and I have a button bush here caged of course with um, golden Alexander's around it and then some shallow sedge I think would look really beautiful and maybe try and keep the deer off of it here are two non-native 
azaleas that the deer eat on, which is fine. They do have beautiful blooms, beautiful white blooms, but you know, I'll just let the deer eat on them. And then up here, I have a lot of sedges and I need to put something else in here this year. So I need to think about the soil, the light, all that kind of good stuff. This tree right here, I probably said it before, is a Kusa dogwood. It is not native and I inherited it. And I really would like to get rid of that and put a native plum tree in there. Just looking for things that are emerging. Lots of the grasses are starting to green up. So the Carex Sprengali and the Carex Rosia. Um, the Carex Rosia, the Carex, what is it, Radiata, Sprengali. All the grasses are greening up. Then this is the start of the pawpaw patch. That's my biggest pawpaw tree. I'm really, really hoping for some pawpaws this year. And then in this bed, you can see we got some green. That's the Golden Alexanders, which I love, which if you watched my video, um, Spotlighting Native Plants, talking about um, Golden Alexanders, they can be used as like a replacement for celery. So those are edible as far as I am concerned, but of course, don't ever take my word for it. Do your own research. Okay, so let's see, moving over here. Here are my compost bins. Here's the regular compost. That's um, yard and house wastes. And then my two leaf bins. And then this is the area where I wanna move my you know, so-called cold frames down here. And put more vegetables up there because I can get more sun up there. But anyway, here I have caged a bunch of different bushes that aren't coming, not sprouting yet, so we won't talk about them. But yeah, if I can go back, those two cold frames, I'll show you in a second. Actually, I'll show you right now. Let me just take you around. They're right there. So anyway, I want to move those down here because even the sunny ones like I'll put the sunnier one right there and then the shadier one maybe off to the side even though it's like dappled sunlight those baby seedlings sometimes it's like way too much sun for them and like where I was just pointing to that's the only place that gets sun in my yard so it's the only place I can go grow vegetables too okay so this is the new bed that I did last year and here's this Galtheria, Pro <laughs> Procumbens, Wintergreen. I'm trying this for the first time and seeing if it's successful here. And I think it's native. If it's not native, native to Northern Virginia, it's close. Um, but I thought I had three, so I'm hoping, oh, there it is, there's the other one. Not doing as well as the others, but we'll see. We'll see how it does. Okay, my coral berries are starting to leaf out. I planted those last year. I think I got those from either Prairie Moon or Prairie Nursery. And then back in there, there's more of them. Right here, right there. And then the native azaleas are in here somewhere. They're not leafing out yet, so can't tell. But if I look back here, I also put golden alexanders in there and then this front row here you can't see them because they're tiny but there are five hypericum prolificums and then if we go to the left of that i have there's um a native aster these little sticks right here that native aster but i just move them all together here and then I put, I intermix them with golden alexanders because um, they flop a little bit. So I'm hoping the golden alexanders hold them up. So there's a little spot there that's been designed. Again, this is, should be all Hypericum prolificum. And then I have shallow sedge. I have three shallow sedges. Those get huge. So one, two, three. In between them, I have a peony, not native, of course, and then three three peonies here. This one you can start to see coming up. Now I transplanted those. I don't know if they'll bloom. I don't know how long it'll be until they bloom. But I planted them super high because 
if you want to get them to bloom, you always plant peonies high. Well, not if you want to get them to bloom, that's just what you do. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the woodland garden. We have daffodils blooming. We have Virginia bluebells starting to emerge. The grasses and the sedges are starting to green up. The golden alexanders are actually starting to bloom. I just absolutely love those. Um, what else from the native perspective? The elderberries are starting to leaf out. So yeah, a lot of exciting things happening. It's the start of spring and I'm just, I'm just so excited for this growing season. And I'm so excited to show you guys how this place transforms over the next couple months. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> I mean, I guess it happens everywhere, but I just think it's so amazing and beautiful and um, the native plants and the native and then the wildlife that come to visit these native plants is just pretty spectacular to me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give you just a, an overview of where we just did a tour of. For perspective, here's my shed. And then down the side, that's the new bed I did at the end of the summer. Down there by the trampoline and where I wanna put these cold frames. Then there's the pawpaw patch. Next to the pawpaw patch is the bird garden. Next to the bird garden is the dry creek bed garden. I'm going to go down there a little bit so it's not so far away. Next to the dry creek bed garden is the hookara and lady fern garden. Behind that is where I have all the ferns and then we're going to come up the side here and let's see right here is where I planted all of the Allegheny spurge and I have a lot of ho um, hellebores there yeah and then I'll walk back up to where we started I got to clean up my little pond here my little sitting space get all those leaves out of the pond it's not good for the water because you don't want the water to have too many nutrients in it for the water plants but yeah this is the woodland garden in March of 2020 I hope you all enjoyed the little walk I know there's not too much to see it's hard to show it in its full glory especially with this sun and it just not being so full but so very excited for this growing season so guys thank you so much for joining me i really hope you enjoyed this tour if you have woodland gardens and want to share um, the plants that you grow i'd love to hear from you in the comments below otherwise again thank you for joining me and we will see you again next time <music>